How are you feeling today, Mr. Mad Blender? Not right. Not right. That's not my name. Please, Mr. Mad Blender. I do not wish to have you sedated again. My name is John. No, 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 but I can hear someone else, not just me. Who do you hear, Mr. Mad Blender? The voice of Olympus. It's real. The gods are real, and, and I'm just a man. My name is John. I just want to go home. You are home, Mr. Mad Blender. Please let me go home. I'm just a man, but the voice it wants me to be more, less than myself, but for something greater. Something bigger than me. What kind of greater thing, Mr. Mad Blender? Please, my name is John. I just want to go home. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and it's time to talk about the other root of the Hercules team. The man I call John Mad Blender. Does he master as hard as he mixes? Let's find out. John's vehicle mode is that of a cement mixer. It's less abstract than his comrades' alt modes, although one could call it a tad squished down. A lot of the paint apps are focused on the cab, rightfully so, as it's really a focal point. A lot of the keynotes are hit between the windshields, vents, and signal lights. There was quite a powerful debate over the unpainted green mixing drum, specifically whether it should be purple. Let me be honest, guys. I super duper do not care. That mixing drum can also spin pretty well, just like the eight wheels that carry John Mad Blender around in his vehicle mode. Also, thanks in part to a transformation joint, the cab can turn on an axle to semi-realistically drag the rear third of the alt mode around. There's a small pack of accessories that mount really happily in the back. You can bust down the five pieces and array them wherever you can find a peg hole. You can also toss the mixing drum aside and swap in any of the other large pegged Hercu team pieces. Or just leave that spot empty for a really boring vehicle mode. Let me air my one transformation grievance. You kind of have to parts form the mixing drum over to another peg hole. Boo. With that out of the way, I gotta say that John Mad Blender does a lot to spice up the conceptually simple conversion process that takes him to robot mode. The legs don't just slide out, they're accordion unfolded. The arms don't just swing down, they use a multi-swivel setup in tandem with independently jointed wheel well plates. This does come to a bit of a crashing halt with the wobbly slide-out head, but hey, Johnny tried hard. In robot mode, the only real mix mastery stuff going on are his shoulder-mounted wheel plates and the big block behind his head. You can flip up the purple cannon bit to mimic Mixie a little more, but quite honestly, John Mad Blender feels more like his own man. He's a chunky and satisfying green and purple construction robot with bold colors and a lost frown on his face. That face's ruby sunglasses can light pipe pretty well, especially considering the big thing right behind John's head. His guns can be mounted in a variety of places, but I usually put them right over his shoulders for proper personal mortar fire action. He can also hold them, wrist mount them, etc. They have removable wedge pieces that offer a little more versatility in how you plug them into things. Oh, Johnny, your head can swivel left and right, but you're on this weird platform that doesn't lock when it comes up, so you kind of have tilting for your head, but it's all loose and wiggly, and honestly, it's kind of awful. I mean, look at this. When his head's up here, it's just always wiggling and bobbing around. On the bright side, it tilts his head very slightly to the, to the left or right so that this, uh, you know, the cheek plate here is now resting on the collar. That kind of holds his head steady, slightly tilted down, but steady at least. As for his arms, they swivel, yo, with or without the uh, the big wheel plate here. And uh, for outwards motion, the transformation joint is basically used, and it's this black thing here, so it's not quite synchronized with everything. It might look a little bit weird in extreme poses, but it works. Uh, there is a bicep swivel, and there is an elbow joint way up the arm. <laughs> Uh, so it works, but it looks kind of weird, because he's got this enormously long forearm with a teeny tiny bicep way up here. I don't know, man. Uh, and his wrists, I guess they can do this if you really think that's cool. His waist uh, can swivel, and right above the waist here in his uh, abulars, uh, there is a, a joint like this. Uh, this is primarily due to something uh, that has to do with the terrible fate of John Mad Blender, but we'll get into that some other day. His hips have got... Some simple ratcheting, some non-ratcheting, some thigh swiveling, uh, some knee jointing, and then if, if you really want, some 
some splitting the leg apart knee jointing, which looks kind of painful, but it does allow for, if you need it, uh, some really deep knee motions. If this isn't already deep enough for you, you crazy person. His uh, feet can bend upwards a little bit if you really want to do that for walking poses, and uh, honestly, it's a little bit annoying because I wish they'd click down because often I've had these things move up about this much, so when I put him down, he loses some of his forward standing base and starts wobbling, so... Uh, I don't know, man. But his posability's fine. He's got uh, he's got a lot of the basic joints. They all work pretty well. And given the enormous amount of stuff that's often on top of his back or body or shoulders or whatever, uh, he's got uh, not only decent posability but decent stability. And he doesn't have that crazy thing where his arms look broken when you bend them. Like it still is kind of there, but due to the huge circle on the elbow, it's prevented somewhat. So it looks just a, just a tad more organic when you're you're bending. The elbow of John Mad Blender. Now, that mixing drum. Busting it apart can be kind of tricky, but once you have everything separated, you've got eight blasters of various barrel sculpts, four short and four long, as well as a big rifle made from the inner core. And this is where the Hercules team's 5mm Pagan port play pattern finally gets to shine in one member all by himself. John Mad Blender is covered in attachment points, with more showing up if you unfold and position his shoulder plates. Hell, you can even plug some semi-cylinders of gun and barrel together and create new weapon layouts for him to use. This is legit fun and incredibly well delivered, making great use of the mixing drum's mass, and making more of the piece than just being a big thing hanging off of John's back. Not to put bullets through the feet of the other three Hercules team reviews I've got left to make, but John Mad Blender is by far the most singularly fun and enjoyable toy of the entire sextet. And it really comes down to the mixing drum. That hugely varied play pattern adds a whole new dimension to this guy, making him almost worth a pickup as a single toy rather than, you know, a man destined to be a leg. He's otherwise got the chunk and 2006 Transformers aesthetic of the rest of the team, certainly not a visual standout as much as he is a tactile standout. I really like him though, and he's gone a long way in making me keep on trucking with my off-delayed Hercules reviews, which I guess means I should have saved him for last. Um... Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I hope I've shown you why I stand not for freedom nor for tyranny, but simply for a man named John. John Madblender. May the gods have mercy on his tortured soul.